Hi, Gary Searman. It is Wednesday, May 16th. Time for another Prophecy in the News Daily Update. And this one is spectacular because something is going on in the Middle East right now that you need to know about. Uh, I'm uh, holding a news release here from Arut Sheva, Israel National News. Nineteen nations are conducting the largest military exercise in the Middle East in 10 years. But wait till I tell you about the military exercise. There's something about it that's most fascinating. The United States is leading what is described as the largest military exercises in the Middle East in 10 years in Jordan, beginning Tuesday the 15th, that was yesterday. The exercise is called Eager Lion 2012, the largest exercise held in the region in the past 10 years, according to Major General Ken Tovo, head of the U.S. Special Operations Forces. And General Tovo says, yesterday, we began to apply the skills that we have developed over the last weeks in an irregular warfare scenario, and they will last approximately the, the coming two weeks. So uh, we're right in the middle of the uh, uh, exercise now, and we still have probably about uh, 12 more days, uh, but nobody knows for sure. Yesterday, he says, we began to apply the skills that we have developed over the past, over the last weeks in an irregular warfare scenario. I felt that was worth emphasizing because we're talking here about an irregular warfare scenario. And reading between the lines, what that means is we're pre preparing ourselves for an unconventional war that might erupt in the region. Why would it erupt? Well, we have Hezbollah, we have Hamas, we have Fatah, we have the Muslim Brotherhood, all of them uh, making noises in the press as though they want to start an uprising. The uprising could start in a number of different ways, and I take it that these exercises are being carried out to meet whatever eventuality should pop up in the region. <clears throat> The message that I want to send through this exercise, says General Tovo, is that we have developed the right partners throughout the region and across the world, ensuring that we have the ability to meet challenges that are coming to our nations. Over 12,000 soldiers are taking part in the war games, representing 19 countries, including Bahrain, Egypt, Iraq, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Pakistan, Qatar, Britain, France, Italy. Spain, and Australia. Did I leave anyone out? Well, that's the list. Guess which nation is not included in the war games? Israel is not included in the war games. Jordanian Army Operations Training Chief Major General Ani Adwan says the military exercise, quote, has been in the plant planning phase for the last three years. That means during the Obama administration which has now been in place for three years. These exercises are being carried out without Israel being a part of the exercises. That's alarming to me, I have to tell you. <clears throat> and notice it's a Jordanian general who's standing up alongside the American Major General Ken Tovo to make a statement about these exercises. More about that in a minute, but I think the Bible has a great deal to say about modern uh, Jordan. A again, quoting uh, the Jordanian general, no forces will be deployed north. The exercise is not connected with any real-world event, Adwan said when he asked if the war games were related to ongoing violent violence in Jordan's northern neighbor, Syria. He immediately soft-pedaled that one. He says, this has nothing to do with Syria. We respect the sovereignty of Syria. There is no tension between the Syrians and us. Our objectives are clear, said Adwan. Israel, in spite of having extensive security agreements with Jordan, was not invited to participate in the exercises. Several Arab nations participating in the drill are still formal, formally at war with the Jewish state. I see uh, a scenario developing here which would exclude Israel from the military planning of the Western nations. I believe that uh, 
Benjamin Netanyahu is is absolutely uh, thoroughly briefed on what's going on here. I, I think he knows very well that Israel is being left out of the planning of this situation precisely because Western planners have now begun to reduce or to remove entirely their support for Israel. And that's why I believe that uh, Netanyahu in the last few days declared that Israel would be under the operation of a unity government, Likud and Kadima uh, joining to control 92 seats in the Knesset. Uh, this would enable them to immediately launch an invasion should one c become necessary. So the preparations are being made by the Israelis. The preparations are being made by the Western Alliance plus the Arab states in this operation called Eager Lion uh, 2012. <clears throat> Washington has granted Amman $2.4 billion in military and economic aid in the past five years, according to official figures. Amman, Jordan, by the way, $2.4 in military aid. Uh, even at the same time, they were reducing our aid to Israel. There are strategic changes going on in Israel. Reading uh, that familiar passage that we have in Isaiah chapter 17, which is a Latter-day prophecy concerning Damascus. We've read it many times, but I'm going to read something else that you'll be interested in. The burden of Damascus, behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. That's never happened <clears throat> in the 4,000-year history of the city Damas of Damascus. It's never been reduced to a ruinous heap. This has to be a future prophecy. The next verse, verse 2, says, The cities of Arawer are forsaken. They shall be for flocks which shall lie down, and none shall make them afraid. The fortress shall also cease from Ephraim, the kingdom from Damascus. The territories being discussed here by Isaiah involve Syria and Jordan. Because in Isaiah 17, 2, where it says the cities of Aroer are forsaken, all you have to do is consult any authoritative map, and you can find out that Aroer is the territory from the Golan Heights south uh, through the region of Amman, Jordan today. In other words, Isaiah is not only prophesying the doom of Syria in Isaiah 17, he's prophesying the doom of Jordan, the cities of Aroer. And remember the way this prophecy ends. Uh, it says in verse 13 of Isaiah 17, the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them they shall flee far off and shall be chased as the chaff of the mountains before the wind and like a rolling thing before the whirlwind and behold at evening tide trouble before the morning he is not. This is the portion of them that spoil us and the lot of them that rob us. Uh, this is a 24-hour war that's being talked about. And the imagery of this war is that the nations shall rush like the rushing of many waters, but God shall rebuke them. We have, right now, not only the Persian Gulf and the Mediterranean Sea military exercises, which we've been telling you about now for at least a month, but now we have Operation Eager Lion 2012 involving 19 countries, but excluding Israel. Wow. If the time isn't right, I don't know how to read the Bible. I mean, things are shaping up in the Middle East in precisely the way the prophets described. So get ready. We're watching. I hope the, you keep watching too. And above all, Jesus is coming, so keep looking up.